So, uh, Jason, why don't you explain your background real quick, and then uh, we can go into your uh, into your work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I run marketing and insights for Live Data Technologies. Um, we're a provider of real-time job change and employment data. And basically, you know, at its core, what we do is we monitor the job changes for 90 million plus white collar professionals on a continuous basis. Nice. Awesome. Uh, let's go into your, uh, Salesforce data because, uh, recently Salesforce stock got, as I last looked, their stock got dinged, um, by 20%. And yes, I should know this cause I'm a, I'm a shareholder of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, let's see, they're at, give me a quick second here. Do, 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 do. They're trading at 228, but let's see. Boom. Went to 272 to 228. Yee, big yikes. Almost like 50 points. Um, so, uh, also, uh, yeah, we're, I would say, Jason, to turn up your, your mic a bit, but at the same time, you're getting background noise, so we're just going to deal with it. Um, yeah, so they, Wall Street did not like the projections. They re revised their growth. They said, hey, things are going to slow down. Like, oh, what a shocker. Interest rates are high. I guess people don't want to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on CRM technology. Like, who would who would want customer relations management technology like that? Mm. Um, so they, they, they guided down. Um, some of my, I was talking to some of their sources saying that they've kind of changed the way that they were reporting some of their revenue, and this kind of led to this current situation. Um, anyways, though, your team had data showing that you had kind of advanced information on where the people were moving before this dropped. So maybe you can go into that. Yeah, absolutely. So just pull it up uh, so that we can see the data you're yep. referencing. Um, you know, we, in picking up all of these job changes, understand that when people leave a company um, and what those people's sort of makeup were, right? For the past 12 months, that makeup looked you know, fairly steady in terms of the tenure of the departing employees for the sales team. And then in April, we saw a bit of a bump. And in, then so far in May, we've seen a massive bump in terms of the tenure of departed employees on the sales team. And, you know, these are the people who are directly responsible for bringing in the revenue. Um, and so, you know, given the nature of how long a job hunt takes and switching roles takes, these are people who A, had been around for a long time and B, had been looking. Uh, Cold the Analytics says, I pay for just two things on the web, ChatGPT and the SFIC channel for its videos and associated Discord group. It's a unique forum for those interested in the advanced aspects of AI technology and business. Jordan Hunt says, it feels like an amazing community of people who are stupidly passionate about tech and are just straight up nice and absolute trove of information and life experiences. Plus, it's a great hub to keep up with the chaos that is AI at the moment, especially when life is keeping me busy. My anti-dead internet theory, home. We talk about robotics in here, we have a channel for AI, place for research, people share their research, papers in there, memes and comedy, gaming, entertainment, investing, documentaries, name it, we got it. Hit that join button right now or support us on Patreon so you can get access to this community. For a new role for at least a significant amount of time. Gotcha. Ed, can you scroll up a bit so we can kind of see just the kind of, or if you don't want to, but these are senior no, executives. Your, these are like senior is, executives. Yeah. yeah. This lives yep. on LinkedIn, so... Yep, uh, here you go. <laughs> uh, so you got Colin Fleming, EVP of Global Markets, 13 years. Sebastian Dinas, AVP of Head of Sales, France, Marketing. Tom Jurisic, VP of Customer Success, Global Readiness, 12 years. Alex Douglas, SVP of Global ISV Partnership Sales. Ali Witherspoon Johnson, SVP of Marketing, Tableau, 11 years. Uh, uh, she was acquired, so I'm wondering if that... 11 years, does that include her tenure at Tableau plus Salesforce or just, yeah, that, that had to be Tableau plus Salesforce. It, it is. Then. Right. The, yeah, a lot, okay, gotcha. A lot of these are, she wasn't the only one who was acquired. There's a, there are a few people who came from MuleSoft, a few people who came from Slack. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, these acquisitions sort of wrap these people into. Exactly. Yeah. Their tenure. The, the Island of Misfit Toys, I was one of them too. <laughs> Um, so it's like, wait a minute, I came slack. I'm back at big corporate. What the hell's going on here? This is so interesting. So, um, 
gosh, uh, how are you guys just like pulling this data? Like, are you like, what's this? What, what's going on here? How are you, are you finding this? So we use a patented version of something called SERP analysis, search engine results pages to go out and prompt engineer all of the search engines, Google, Bing, Yandex, Baidu. I think if I asked my tech team, there's one more, um, to ask them, you know, is, you know, Colin Fleming still the EVP of global marketing at Salesforce? No, if not, is where he is frozen? He also, I get my Comcast stuff fixed now. Okay, there you go. When you go gotcha. and you ask these search engines, they'll return a whole raft of digital exhaust on a person, you know, sort of all of the places on the internet where they're tied to their employment. And we are able to perform that query, that search for every single one of the people in our 90 million person database every 10 days at most. So you know, nice. when, we see, when we see a change state, you know, this person added an end date and then also added a start date at another company, or this person started updating their resume or whatever it might be. You know, there was a hiring announcement for the top level, you know, senior employees that tend to get those press releases done for their movement. Um, nice. You know, we sort of take all of that digital exhaust, ingest it, and discern a truth state from it. And you know, in discerning that truth state, we either get a yeah, they're still where you think they are, or no, they've moved on and they're nowhere else. They haven't started another job, or they're somewhere else now. Gotcha. Yeah, people vote with their feet. Um, this is super duper cool. Do you have any other? Yeah, doesn't be Salesforce yeah, I mean, related, you know, but any other cool stories that you've seen interesting recently here, regarding? You know, Sorry, I was just saying a lot of the interesting stories here, you know, come with, you know, not only did these people who are senior, you know, long tenured employees of Salesforce leave, but they also went to, you know, two of these eight people, 25% went to a top competitor that's been stealing a bunch of talent or poaching a bunch of talent from Salesforce for the last year plus. Was it service that service now service now right. yeah. recently, I guess two weeks ago worked with Right, and you can see it in the bottom of this. Uh, yeah. Here, worked with Brody Ford, who's a reporter at Bloomberg, uh, to look, you know, exactly at that flow of talent between Salesforce and ServiceNow, and ServiceNow has been taking, you know, I th I'm going to botch the numbers off the top of my head, but it's, you know, they have they took about 200 plus employees from Salesforce in the last year, where they also they took you know, 150 something employees from Oracle, which is a company that's dramatically larger in the last year. Right. And then ServiceNow, they have what, 22,000 people working there compared to Salesforce is 60,000 plus or something. And then ServiceNow, they, they, uh, they, let's see, they found it in 2004. So kind of around the time of Salesforce, I think Salesforce was like in the late nineties or something mm -hmm. uh, based upon my, my, my Googling. So I'm, I'm also interested. They probably got, if there's these well tenured people at Salesforce who are now going to service now, they're probably getting pretty sweet compensation packages to get them yeah, over the hump absolutely. of losing their vested they're, equity they're, they're and the refresh. Um, getting probably getting broader right, scope. The writing on the wall. Um, right, from the, you know, you know, these are salespeople who yeah. rely on commission. And, you know, this is exactly what we were sort of trying to poke at with this data and interrogate with this data was the fact that you have these people who have been at Salesforce forever which is, you know, for years now had, you know, pretty solid earnings and they just had, you know, the first big earnings miss in, I think some of the headlines said this was the worst earnings since 2008, which certainly goes back earlier than even Colin, our friend who was there for 13 years had been there. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And, you know, they, they also see what, what's going to happen next is layoffs probably. Yep. Um, and so let's, let's get ahead of that. Um, let's, let's leave. Let's not be here holding the bag. Um, so yeah, definitely good points. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, I think it's a, just a r rough spot for those people to be in right now, trying to sell that type of technology when the market's getting so much tighter. Um, well, and you know, you think about what Salesforce is, is it's a SaaS tool sold to sold on the, you know, based on C licensing. Mm -hmm. And as a bunch of teams are trying to get leaner and meaner, they, A, are getting rid of the people that would occupy those seats, and B, are trying to get more frugal in the number of seats that they assign to anyone. You know, I can take 
an example from live data as a company, you know, we just had our Salesforce renewal and now we, you know, we, we got more frugal in terms of where we'd like to assign those relevant seats. Yeah, I know exactly. And also just, it, it creates friction too. Um, I, I found my, with, with that model is sometimes probably companies are like, can we get like a flat fee? <laughs> and because then, you know, if, if I'm thinking like from my experience, with just like using Zapier, Zapier is not per seat or, or anything, but I get charged per zap now. And so instead of me getting more engrossed in their ecosystem and creating many more different workflows and getting locked in there like a good bank, um, and then them slowly just boiling the frog with me and over the years increasing fees, they are said, no, we're going to charge you per zap. So then I'm like, mm, I guess I'm just going to cut certain workflows I don't need because I don't want to go pay the next pricing tier because it's ridiculous. Um, so your point regarding just the per seat model and then how these companies are getting more frugal and then also these companies are getting smaller. Um, I, I, one of my hypotheses, and I think it's, we're very, very early on this story. There's some other AI gurus who say, oh, we're already seeing all these jobs being lost because of AI. It's like, no, COVID over. Oh, go Man, ahead. Well, I can put some numbers to it. Go for it. This is what's happening to that seat license cohort. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, you know, you see the rapid growth or continued rapid growth up through the end of ZERP in late 2022. And since then, as companies, you know, we entered the great termination and all of the right sizing that has happened since companies are, you know, just decidedly shrinking the size of their entry level and mid level uh, sales and marketing teams. Uh, sorry, say the last part. I said, you know, you see companies and sort of across the board, the stock of entry to mid-level sales and marketing roles has been decreasing since late 2022. Interesting. So there was a ZERP. So what was that zero interest rate phenomenon or something? And so we saw it explode. Yep. And then interest rates came in and it's like, uh, actually now we need to slow down the hiring. So we're probably not going to be buying as much, or we're not going to need as many recruiters, we're not going to need as many sale reps. So those are the first ones to get on the chopping block. Exactly. All of the things yeah. where companies, when money was relatively free, yeah, could afford to scale growth with headcount. You're now right. seeing sort of the regression to the mean now that money is no longer free. Exactly. And that's a whole other economic conversation because I think like, it's just, there's just so many bad companies. And you probably see there's a lot of bad companies out there where it's like, why are you getting money right now? Yeah. Like, why are venture capitalists giving you money? You shouldn't, like, like, I always bash on the scooter companies all the time. But it's like, I think it's cool. Like, these, I've seen just families in my neighborhood who ride in the scooters together. And it's cool. It's, it's cool. Who doesn't like electric scooters? I also, at, at Google, they used to have, um because they, they're spoiled us, they were giving us $5,000 Schwinn electric bikes to ride around campus, bro. And those things, I could go up to 20 miles, 29 miles an hour on it. <laughs> and it, it, you know that old, old saw of like, uh, was it uh, too much power is all, uh, absolutely corrupts or something? Yeah. And I'd always be oh, no, if I was if I was in power, I wouldn't be corrupted by it. But once I was able to go 29 miles an hour on that bike, I, I would be at stop sides and the car would be next to me. I'd be like, oh, I think I could beat this car off the, off the line. <laughs> you, you were one of the people that I was racing down Foothill. Uh, but anyways, uh, what Boulevard. I was getting at was like scooter companies, they, they shouldn't be, they sh sorry. I just said you, you were one of the people that I was racing down Foothill uh, oh. as I was pedaling my bike. I, I, yeah. I grew up in the Bay Area and <laughs> exactly. all I promise you all of the Google employees who are riding their e-bikes to work wearing chinos and flat pedal shoes were going blowing by me as I'm <laughs> mid interval. Uh, <laughs> I know it all too well. You're all huffing and puffing and there's yeah. like these we're also eating your avocado toast while on the bikes. Exactly. Uh but though this is this is super interesting. I'm glad I'm glad you shared this research. Do you have any other like any other research that ties into this this theme here of like what's going on here and you know with Salesforce or what's going on here the slowing slowing down with tech employees? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think you know we it's something I spend most of my time looking at is sort of what the latest trends are. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen you know in looking at sort of the show notes or the tee up for today's uh, episode. You know, spend some time looking at 
OpenAI's robotics hiring. You know, roughly, you know, we've seen that they've hired somewhere around 400 to 500 employees already this year. And about a tenth of those employees have robotics experience or came from a robotics company. Bro, that's awesome. Do you have any charts or any data re regarding like AI stuff you can show? Or we, I, I, we pulled the counts before this, but uh, I had about ten minutes. <laughs> okay. To, no, no, no. To dig into it, we'll um, have you back. We'll have you back. Um, we'll still talk more about it. so ten like percent. So 40, 40 uh, roboticist related jobs, mm -hmm. um, and then we were going to go to the story uh, about that. Now, have you seen anything interesting regarding like just? You know, I, what you can share um, about just where is this AI talent going? Like, are you seeing more AI, AI talent being sucked from out of Google's Google into OpenAI and, and and Anthropic into OpenAI, and then are you seeing more kooks leave OpenAI and go to Anthropic? Like, any interesting any interesting trends? And I, and if there's stuff you can't share yet, that's that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we'll we'll have some more coming out on this next week. Yeah. Um, but you know, the the general punchline is. You know, there's been a massive talent, unsurprisingly, massive talent war for the top AI talent, uh, mm. you know, especially since the launch of ChatGPT in late 2022. You know, we sort of saw this big brain drain from a lot of the big tech companies, you know, being Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, um, well, Google, you know, sort of the Google Alphabet complex uh, and Meta. And, you know, all of whom had been working on this tech for a long time. And then I think a lot of the employees realized their value and realized the value that they could attract, uh, you know, as the AI craze really picked up steam and jumped ship either to join, you know, sort of the hottest startups, you know, the likes of OpenAI, Anthropic, Scale, AI, um, you know, a number of other, you know, name brand companies or to go start their own, right? You know, I think we are, we all saw the craze trend of ex Google DeepMind employee leaves DeepMind and raises $120 million the next week. Um, and now you have a bunch of people that, you know, they have to hire to join them to build out their teams. And so you've seen a lot of hiring from you know, these people who are end up as sort of talent magnets. Yeah, yeah, they they were alum of pick your big tech company and you know went to go found their own thing and they've since brought with them you know most of the team that was working with them <laughs> uh, at at that big tech company which is which is equally valuable you know it, it we we know that these companies can be highly capital efficient in terms of opex and in terms of headcount but you know it, it, that only works if you can bring the top minds with you. So true. Well said. Um, yeah, that was part of my job. I mean, I worked on like 150 different m and Hey, we're looking for advertisers. Everyone loves advertising, right? Yes. From you. I really want to do a home shopping network like type of deal where I'm either selling samurai swords or your enterprise product or your invention or something that I can market without actually going to jail or anything. So I've never been to jail. I don't want to go. So anyways, if you would like to market your product, to our community, we have about almost 4,600 subs, 30,000 social media followers, 2,000 folks on our newsletter, well-connected group of STEM employees. If you'd like to reach them, then consider being an advertiser on our show and reach out to me at info at svinvestorsclub.com. as info at the letter svinvestorsclub.com. Thanks. Any transactions through my time at Google up to Salesforce or Slack? And a lot of deals were just like, um, there's no enterprise value in this app, hot dog, not a hot dog, but <laughs> you've assembled some of the world's greatest AI researchers. Yep. Let's just bring Jordan in so we can give you a nice comfy Google job and then we can get rid of your hot dog, not a hot dog app. And then now we have four or five engineers who work really well together, know how each other think, and we can just go send them on a project that we need to get fixed to improve Google. And it's super valuable. So it, it sounds like the world for probably those type of acquisitions on the AI side is still alive and well. But as far as the other type for rank and file type engineers and whatnot for non-AI related use cases, probably not so much. Um, also, you know, I think it, it, it's great you brought that up. And then, um, you know, if you're working at 
a Google, a top tier company, and you stay for the rise, but then you also stay until it goes to the decline, then recruiters look at it to a degree of like, hmm, you had so many great options. You were seeing writing was on the wall. Why did you write it down unless you had like God tier uh, golden handcuffs? And one thing that we see too at Google is we will get you know engineers, product managers, or top tier. They have VCs reaching out to them all the time saying, hey, like, what are you thinking about doing? Here's a check. Just, just go do it. Just go figure it out. Like we had Yohi on here who used to say, yeah, that's what VCs would do. And now what I do is I just instead go to ChatGPT, try to create a coding idea of something I want to see in the market. And then I open source it and see if people want to actually work on turning into a company and I might invest in them. Um, so that is, it's just, it's really, it's really interesting to see. And so when I see people like, you know, there's only the old saw of like, don't be bouncing, changing jobs every two years. It looks really bad on your resume. It's like, no, that's not the way things here at Silicon Valley. You know, like if someone gives you an awesome deal and you've already been at the company only for a year and a half, people would say, you didn't take that opportunity. Like what's wrong with you? Um, but that, we're well, in a very, strange, you, very you, strange place. Yeah, it's a very right? strange group. And you quickly start to understand the realm of, where that company is going, sort of the trajectory. And again, with the pe people vote with their feet uh, mentality, you know, people are going to jump to what they're passionate about building and what has the highest you know, likelihood of success. And if something looks not just shinier, but you know, objectively better, then people are going to take that chance as it comes up. Exactly. Um, uh, so dude, uh, this was fantastic. You got five more minutes. I mean, when I say you got five more minutes, I could talk to you forever, but hmm. I want to like, what are things that, cause you have other meetings and you gotta eat lunch. You're not a freak like me. You just eat lunch every now and then. Um, what are other things that you think we should have talked about that we didn't jump in here today? I mean, I think, you know, the ability to use, right. You know, I think about this from the job change data lens and the pulse that that can give you on any company, any industry, any role, you know, sort of the economy as a whole. Um, you know, I think you know, I, it's what keeps me up at night <laughs> at, yeah. a, at a certain level, right? You know, I'm constantly sitting in bed uh, or out on a bike ride and have to pull my phone out to write down, okay, you know, I should go look at how many people left OpenAI in the last month to go start a fintech company. How many people, you know, and did they then hire people from Stripe or, right. you know, the, all of the different realms, you know, what's happening to the executive assistant role as AI comes online and can handle all of your sort of operational daily Ooh, tasks for you. Jay said you brought up the, oh, okay. So I was, I was an admin and I was the reluctant admin who was just like, I'm not doing this because I enjoy this work. I'm doing this because I want healthcare at <laughs> Google. And I had fun. You're the, you're the ambat being at Google, especially you're the ambassador of goodwill. Like your job is just like, I throw parties, come to my <laughs> party. It's like, who, who doesn't like this person? Uh, but I remember we had Sundar did an admin all hands. He met all the admins and just took all of our questions. I was like, what, what world do I live in where Sundar is going to sit here and listen to us admins? Like whatever. And one of my friends was like, Hey, so, um, he asked the, I call it the Ken Bone question. I don't know if you remember Ken Bone, but he was like, oh, Hillary, like, uh, you know, if we go for this uh, carbon neutral, carbon free world, like, what does that mean for coal mining jobs? Like, yeah, I kind of have a stupid question is that Ken, that means yeah, your job's probably gone. But she has to go, no, actually, we're going to protect your job. But anyways, my, fr my friend asked, he was like, so like, if, they, if we invent better AI that can schedule, that can take notes, that can handle all the organizing parties, like, what does that mean for like admins? Like, are, are we cooked? And like, Sudar had to like, like diplomatically, like, oh, like, there's going to be room for you. And there is, there's going to be room for great. Like, if, if you see a great admin, a great chief of staff, like, they, they, can make and break executives. There's always going to be room for them, but it it also means that those those ones who use the AI are going to be much better performers, and then it's going to be able to kill off all the bitch work they don't want to do, so they can focus on better work. Exactly. Um, are you seeing it's, any it's augmentation, not replacement? Replacement, exactly. Are you seeing any slowdown in admin related 
hiring or anything or is that I, been actually, still that, steady i came up with that on the fly i have to go look at it now <laughs> what do you just what do you uh, you know george i'm like i'm like kanye west i've i forgot line rhymes and ideas that you could never even think of or whatnot our friend the line is do, do you think we can go get you back on the show do a deep di- deep dive on just where the talent's going around open ai where it's coming from to and fro what's going on with deep mind and google who's going to anthropic who's not and, and whatnot we'd love yeah, to do that absolutely I mean, look, anytime Sweet. you want to add the sort of human capital flow and job change data to anything, uh, yeah. always happy to join. Let's do it. And also, you were an early listener to the show, I believe, and you were like, I love your show. I love the comedy. I love being on here. And so I appreciate that. So thank you for watching and supporting us. Um, and uh, don't let those Googlers on their bourgeoisie e-bikes make you feel less than the person, okay? You're special, nah, Jason. I just, I just, I just have to matter. train harder to raise them. You just got to train. Yeah, you just get the steroids. Just get those steroids exactly. and you, you'll be good. Um, awesome. What's your website again? Uh, what's the? Yeah, you can find us at LiveDataTechnologies.com. LiveDataTechnologies.com. Check them out. Good stuff. Good information. Follow Jason on LinkedIn. He's like, LinkedIn is like being waterboarded. It's terrible, but he <laughs> is a source of light in LinkedIn. He makes it worthwhile. So follow him thanks, on thanks LinkedIn. You. All right, Jason, I'm going to go back to doing my AI stuff and talking about more AI stuff and Absolutely. stuff like that. So the, thank look, you for joining. All, all, always intelligent. Thank you, man. I, pre- I appreciate that, buddy. I'm a, a G, I'm a GPT.005 and Joe's a GPT-10. Um, so, all right, Jason, you take it easy. I'll see ya.